Well, this is going to be part two. Battery went dead on me. But, yeah, I couldn't find them zip ties. So I went to town and bought some more, but these are smaller than what I had and smaller than what I want. These are only 15 inches long. And they're, these are big ones, but the ones I got are heavier than this yet. And I don't know what length they are, they're too, still too short. But what I did is just stuck two of them together. Look at the tail of it. Yeah. Just got two of them zipped together there so I can cinch them down. And it worked pretty damn good. This one's I like to use. Now this is overkill because I tie I like to at least tie it twice. I only really need one because the next thing I do is a little more slack here. This underneath, so it's clear underneath, up there underneath that pan. And when I start bagging the silage, you push out, and this will be tucked underneath, and there's no way that's going to come apart. That's the way I do it. And they say you just don't want to bunch that together. Yeah, I'm upside down here. You don't want to just bunch that together. And then just leave the tail up here in the middle. There is a lot of pressure on that. The guy that I bought this bagger from, he did custom work. And the first bag I ever got off him, because I had a different bagger at first. He was the one I got the bags from. I had to meet him. I met him at a place to pick it up. And he was just setting the bagger up there and he showed me how he did it. And he'll pull these together and roll it over a, a 2 by 4 then he'll put another 2 by 4 on top and lag screw them together and then he would hang it here in the back cage but when he started bagging it was bending that 4 by 4 so like I said I mean there's a lot of pressure pushing on that so it's best like I say tuck it underneath and let it roll on top of it make the pain in the ass if you got to open this end of the bag but you don't want that thing popping open. So now, next step is getting this backstop on there. And that's the other thing. It's real fun moving this thing around, too. And this is supposed to be a lighter one. This is an aluminum frame. The guy told me that this, this cage this aluminum frame is like a, was a $2,000 option at the time. It's supposed to be lighter and easier to move it around. It's still a beast to move. But uh, he had one of the metal ones. He had two or three baggers. And on another bagger there, he went and got, he got pinned underneath one. He couldn't, it slipped on him or whatever. And he got trapped underneath and couldn't get out. So that's why he bought this one. So, but I'm surprised he let this go as a bagger. I would have kept it and put on another bagger if that was the case. But then again, this is an eight foot bagger and when he got rid of this one, all he had left was nine and 10 footers. He actually bought a nine foot bagger to replace this one. So I doubt if that cage would do him much good. But next thing I do is like I said, I take the bottom of the box and I put it up on top of the tunnel here. And I have to set it down again, two hands. And that's what I do there. I, the reason I do that is when you put the backstop up here, it's going to rest on top against this top. And when you start bagging, as the speed's pushing in here, it bounces in and out. And it will pinch against the metal lip here, and it will actually split the bag right open there. So I usually put that on there for at least the first load or two. And then after I get going, I'll take that off and I'll actually cut that box in half. And then I'll tuck it beside the bag where these hooks are to help protect them from digging into the bag. Because as you can, when you get out there, they start pulling in. And they say, one thing you don't want in this is a hole in the bag. So now we get the backstop up against there.
nested in there a little bit. And you gotta move it, get centered up here. See, it's resting on that box up there, and it'll keep it from splitting that bag. Yeah, I got three on that side. One, two. This has got to shift this way a little bit. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's pretty much centered. Some slack out here in the cables. Put that one on. Slack out of that. Hold on. And it might make a difference on how the cables are and some other baggers or something, but this one you want to put them from the bottom up. And then, yep, tug this until it's taut. Pretty much pulled in there. And I say, if you put these in from the top down, when you start bagging on this one, anyhow, it's, it'll want to twist this way and it puts that point right into the bag. And eventually, it's going to be pulling into the bag. And if you got them points down, you're going to put a hole in the bag. I've done it. I did it on that bag. I don't know how many bags I've done in the spring. I forgot all about it. I put them the other way and I put a hole in that bag. And you come over here and shut that off. And I got a problem with this. It's leaking pressure off overnight. Here it goes. And that's where I start out at. I mean, every gauge I've seen on every bagger is different. And I say, this all depends on if you're, like right now, I'm fairly level. Where I was bagging, I was going on a downhill, so you usually want to use more pressure on a downhill because of the way of the tractor. Uphill, you might use a little less because you're pushing the tractor, where downhill, the tractor's actually pulling a little bit with gravity. So... That's a good starting point right there. Get this down. Yeah, that's a good level to start out at. And then the next thing I do. The other one here. Ouch. Next thing I do is I bring with I've even done with the power fork, just putting the points on that, but I put the bucket against the top. Because like everything else, it's gonna to go to the point of least resistance. And if you're pushing more weight forward than it is to the back, it's gonna push the back back. And I've had this cage come clear back to a 45 degree angle. And 
I've been lucky where it's pulled back and other times I've taken this and actually pushed it forward, pushed the whole tractor and everything forward. So I usually do this for a load or two until I get a good pack in here and the tractor's moving pretty good and I don't have to worry about it. And that's how I set the bagger up. There you got the end tied good, tucked underneath there. When I start bagging, that'll roll underneath it and that, this end won't come open. I've got the backstop set up. I still got to go up there. I got to adjust that, straighten that bag up a little bit up there. And I got one other small job to do. I'm up there. Gotta fill this up. Ooh, it is empty. This is a Gandy applicator. Pretty much any anything you need metered on. Right now I'm putting a solid inoculant on. And what it does, it helps preserve the silage. It's uh, got one and a half billion colony forming units per pound of lactic acid producing organisms. And not less than 1.5 billion colony forming units per pound. And for haylage, one to two pounds per ton. And what this does, these basically burns, feeds off the sugars in the silage in the air and it produces lactic acid. And lactic acid makes propionic acid, I think it is. I think that's how it goes. And the propionic acid is what preserves it. So I say, I'm just put it in here and as I'm bagging now this one has four tubes on it and I have used to have hoses on all four and they fall off stuff so the way I got this now I got two dropping way down there and these two up here kind of blow around a little bit and as the silage comes in it mixes it all in so, give me a minute here and I'll empty the bag in. There, I just straighten them out a little bit. So that should be good to go. And there's that in there. And like I say, just meters on. That's probably enough. Yeah, it'd be close to three load in there. I just got got a wired up to the battery on the tractor. Got a switch here. And just flip the switch on and kind of see it in there. I don't know if it's showing up or not, but you see it raining in there. Yeah, I might have to cut that back a little bit. That is falling pretty good. But so that mixes in there and like I said, it helps preserve the silage, ferments it faster. They kind of say you can start feeding this in about two two weeks, maybe three weeks. Just let it go through a natural fermentation. And it might take four weeks or so for it to stabilize. But, uh... I right, just take this kid's steer and scrape that off there yet, but we should be good to start here now. Like I said, that's why bagging ain't cheap. They say, especially if you got a hire done. They say this stuff here, I think, was sixty-five dollars a bag, and I aim between four to five bags and a two hundred foot bag. So say five bags, that's three hundred dollars there. And that bag is four hundred and ten. And then you got all your time and fuel and chopping and stuff. And so it adds up.
I like to do between four and five bags a year. This is gonna be bag number three. And I'm almost certain of the second crop I got out there yet, I'm gonna pretty much fill this bag and I still got that sedan grass, so. And who knows, if we get in there a month of good weather, hell, that's greening up pretty damn good down there. I might have some third cutting around here to cut yet. If we don't get a frost before November. Yeah, that, that could be worth something down there. Hell, I, the year that was new seeding, I bailed, uh, bailed 30 cutting on that Thanksgiving, day before Thanksgiving, day after. Wrapped it, and it snowed the next day. But that was another wet fall. It's the only time I could get on there. Should have been off three weeks before that. So. Oh, geez. Rambled on here. This is supposed to be a short part two. But. That's pretty much setting it up and it's ready to go. So thanks for watching. And like I say, the first part of my battery went dead. So, which worked out good because I didn't have this cage right here, so I was just gonna end it after I tied it off. But now, well, like I said, I can make this extra part of it and show the rest of it, so, yep. So thanks for watching and we'll catch up with you later.